Hello kind people of YouTube and welcome back to another video. As always today we're gonna take a quick look at the crypto markets before we move on to some news. You already see the articles open up here. They will of course all be linked in the description because I'm not always going to read out the full article. So if you want to check any of these out yourself, check in the description. There's a bunch of other stuff in the description as well. If you like this channel and want to support me, you can do it there. If you want to send in questions, if you want to follow me on social media, it's all in there. Let's get started by refreshing CoinMarketCap quickly. After a relatively eventful day yesterday, we are back to very little movement in the markets today. Everything slides down a bit to 209 billion total market cap. I believe if I recall correctly yesterday we had gotten above 210 billion again, but not by all that much. Everything else not really moving in any meaningful capacity. Bitcoin dominance is back to 53.6%, just about where it has been for about a week now. And the 24 hour volume is still between 9 and 10 billion dollars. Nothing much changing here. If we're looking at the top 10 co um, tokens here, we see the biggest loser today is Stellar, but once again only down 1.54%. That is not a very big loss, especially in the crypto world, with most tokens moving by less than half a percent. Notably here, Tether has still not managed to reach parity with one US dollar again. It is at 98.8 .8 cents. That now makes almost two weeks since Teva crashed down to 92 cents and it has slowly but surely been recovering but still hasn't been able to get back to the value it is supposed to hold. Despite, and that is going to be the first piece of news for today, um, despite 500 million Teva having been burned, that is about one fifth of all the Teva that existed were just burned yesterday. Let's read this article here from Coindesk. Shortly before 1 p.m. on Wednesday, Teva, the company behind the dollar link stablecoin of the same name, announced via Twitter that it had destroyed 500 million tokens. Previously, those tokens were held in an account known as the Teva Treasury. The past few weeks have seen massive influxes of Teva to the Treasury, particularly after the cryptocurrency lost parity with the US dollar last week, amid questions about Teva's access to banking services. From October 14th, when Teva started to slip below $1, to October 23rd, 680 million Teva were transferred to the company controlled Treasury wallet. All of these transfers came from an address controlled by Bitfinex, a cryptocurrency exchange that overlaps with Teva in terms of ownership and management. Bitfinex's cold wallet's balance has fallen by around 100,000 Bitcoin since early September, leading some to speculate that the exchange has been spending Bitcoin in order to take Teva off the market, perhaps to push the exchange rate back towards the $1 mark, or perhaps even to exit the stablecoin business entirely. As a result of these transfers, the supply of Tevers in circulation has dropped by around a quarter in a week and a half to approximately 2 billion. Now many of these tokens, in addition to having been taken out of circulation, have been burned or destroyed by the company. Kasper Rasmussen, Bitfinex's director of communications, said the action does not have anything to do with defending dollar parity, since both the exchange and Tava guarantee one for one redemptions. He denied that Tava is intentionally scaling back support. Now here we have to pay attention closely to what he is saying here. Um, while on Bitfinex itself and allegedly Tava the company also are offering exchange rates of exactly one dollar because they are trying to keep it tight to the US dollar. Um, if the value of Tava on the open market falls, that is still very bad for the token. That is very bad for their image. That opens them up to abuse. People can buy it cheaply and then um, redeem it for US dollars with them. That is not a situation they want to be in. So they're saying this here like that means they wouldn't have a reason to, um, to burn these to defend parity. They absolutely have the reason to, to, um, to burn them to defend parity. Tava tokens are redeemed when the amount circulating exceeds the amount required for e.g. Bitfinex or Tava to operate, Rasmussen said. And the reason most of the destroyed tokens came from Bitfinex's wallet is that Bitfinex is one of the main customers of Tava. Once again, this strikes me as not much of a response. Um, what the hell is this supposed to mean? They're just destroying them when they're not necessary to keep them operational. That is how they're dealing with their cryptocurrency. They make and destroy them as they need it. That 
is not how you want a project you are invested in dealing with their supply. This is freely creating and destroying how it suits them. That is not a good look. In its announcement Wednesday, Teva said that it had not burned all of the Teva in the treasury account and that around 466 million remain in the account as a preparatory measure for future um, Teva issuances. The announcement characterized transfers of Teva to the treasury as redemption, a process that Teva describes in its original white paper. The 2016 white paper specifies that Teva holders can redeem their tokens for US dollars directly with the company. Teva maintains that every Teva token is backed by a US dollar deposit, but has not convinced many skeptics that the cryptocurrency is in fact fully collateralized. And more reason here to believe that it might not be fully collateralized is how they're just creating millions and millions of them out of thin air and destroying them out of thin air. That is not the kind of thing you're typically doing when you have them collateralized, when you have, um, when you have a deposit that backs them. <laughs> the anonymous anti-Tether campaigner Bitfinex, however, disputed Tether's characterization of transfers to the treasury as a redemption, writing, not one person can come forward and say that they converted Tethers to dollars and got wired money from Tether. Rasmussen, the Bitfinex spokesman, claimed otherwise, telling Coindesk, yes, direct customers of Teva are able to redeem Teva through Teva Limited. But many others allege that it is not possible to redeem Teva tokens for dollars with Teva. Now, I'm very skeptical, especially after the, come some of the news that um, came out the last couple of days about Teva. Uh, one thing to be said here is that as they're talking about direct customers here, that might only be an opportunity for large customers who are in a direct business relationship with Teva. So I don't want to suggest that they are lying here, but it certainly, it certainly doesn't seem crazy to be skeptical about whether it is possible for your everyday person to just sell off your Teva tokens and get one for one US dollars for them. Especially since with Teva being worth less than one dollar right now, that would be incredibly open to abuse. That would be a way that you could just, you could just buy a ton of Teva at this lower price. And then you could go to Teva Limited and say, hey, you promised one dollar for each of these, pay me a dollar each. That is just, um, it seems incredibly unlikely that that would just be a possibility here, but they claim it will, they claim it is a possibility. Um, it would have been nice if someone could have found like just one person to actually confirm that this is happening who is not working directly with Teva. But like I said, I'm not going to suggest that they are lying here. I honestly do not know. I'm just sharing what this article says here. I am personally skeptical, but um, most of these things, there are potential um, reasonable explanations, but it seems more and more unlikely that those are ultimately true and that is worrying to me. Now with the Tether price crashing, with them burning 500 million out of the blue, with them constantly creating and destroying as they see fit, with how closely integrated they are with Bitfinex, with uh, there's just with no one being able to verify that they are actually collateralized, that is just too much worrying stuff at the same time. And I'm personally, I cannot support Teva in any capacity at the moment. I'm absolutely willing to be proven wrong though. So if you have um, if you have some good arguments that I'm ignoring, do tell me. Or if um, if the situation around Teva changes, if they didn't reliably prove that they are properly collateralized and that all these claims are true, I'm gonna change my tune about Teva. But right now it is not looking good. Continuing on, we're, we're moving more in the unconfirmed area for a moment. U.S. regulators could approve backed Bitcoin futures launch in first week of November. Of course, Backed is a big, big, big platform that we're all waiting for that a lot of people believe could send the prices flying when it launches. And while this is not confirmed, this does seem in line with what many of us were believing the time frame would be anyway. So I'm just going to quickly read it out for you guys. The Intercontinental Exchange's Backed cryptocurrency platform could get approval to launch its physically delivered Bitcoin futures product from US regulators next week, an unconfirmed anonymous source told tech outlet The Block on Thursday. Backed, which seeks to create a regulated ecosystem for institutional investors looking to gain exposure to cryptocurrency, had previously confirmed it planned to launch its futures product on December 12th. Should regulators give the project the green light, 
ICE's backed will begin launching its Bitcoin daily futures contract for clients as soon as the first week of next month, according to an unnamed source with direct knowledge of the situation, the blog says. The unnamed source also told the publication that Chicago trading shop DV Trading will trade backs product. Concerns that non-custodial options will ultimately detract from the industry's credibility have surfaced from cryptocurrency figures in particular, with crypto enthusiast Andreas Antonopoulos warning over the impact of regulators approving Bitcoin exchange traded funds in the future. Non-physical Bitcoin futures first launched from CBOE and CME Group in December 2017. Poor returns have combined with volatility in markets close to settlement dates, sparking debate among analysts. Now it is important to keep in mind here that this is not just an unnamed source but it appears to be a source that was anonymous to them as well. Now there are differences between what is simply an unnamed source and an anonymous unconfirmed source. Um, an unnamed source is someone whose um, identity is known to the journalists or to the, um, to the newspaper or website that published the article but whose name is redacted for various potential reasons. But an unconfirmed anonymous source is usually somebody who even the news source has not been able to validate, um, validate to verify. So take this with many, many, many grains of salt. Generally, if a source is just unnamed, you can be relatively certain that if you're getting the information from, um, from a reliable um, news outlet that they have done their due diligence and have checked that as a legitimate source and just have reasons why they can't publish their name. For instance, because the person isn't allowed to publicly talk about it. But um, unconfirmed and anonymous take a lot of, a lot of salt, a lot of grains of salt. Just heap, heap on all the salt, all of the salt. <laughs> But if this turns out to be true, that is still exciting. That could mean the market is moving significantly faster than many of us anticipated. Continuing on, we're looking into the future once again. Blockchain's first hardware wallet will let you trade crypto for crypto. Now blockchain, of course, big player in the crypto world. And they are now partnering with Ledger on a new product. Full disclosure, um, I do have a Ledger affiliate code. So if you want to buy a Nano Ledger S, I think that is what it's called. That is a hardware wallet where you can securely store dozens of cryptocurrencies with a, ni a, nice, um, a nice web interface that you can use to interact with them. You can store them locally, well encrypted, on a little um, safe device. Um, I have an affiliate code for that. So if you want to buy one, it's in the description. But just know because I have this affiliate code, that I am in some way connected to them. Um, I have not made any money from them yet. So they haven't given me any money. They haven't paid me to talk about it here. But just know I like to give full disclosure like this. I like to be transparent. I have an affiliate code. So me talking about this, just keep that in mind. But what I'm gonna say here is I'm not gonna lie about anything. I'm just gonna give my honest opinions. And that is how I'm always gonna run this channel. So let us read this here because I do think this is relatively exciting. This could be a very interesting new product. One of the oldest software wallet providers in the cryptocurrency industry is launching its first hardware product. Announced Thursday, blockchain has partnered with hardware wallet maker Ledger and started taking orders for a new handheld device called Lockbox. The first batch of shipments will go out in November. While there are a number of hardware wallets on the market, Lockbox stands out in two ways according to blockchain CEO and co-founder Peter Smith. First, in addition to storing funds offline like other devices, it will facilitate crypto to crypto trades through Swap, the company's native brokerage which is launching next week. The aim is to make trading easier with an all-in-one account, Smith told Coindesk explaining, for us, what's really important right now is to get the product to a point where you don't need other places to complete your actions um, to your user actions in crypto. Further, unlike other hardware wallets, Lockbox is endpoint controlled, Smith said. In other words, while the wallet connects to the internet by plugging into a computer, a special key set inside the device will only allow it to connect with legitimate websites, deflecting phishing attempts by fake versions of internal platforms like my EFA wallet, for example. Much like blockchain's online platform, which garnered nearly 30 million accounts since its founding in 2011, the lockbox will mainly support Bitcoin, Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash. However, the team said they are willing to consider adding support for additional assets if there's proven user demand. Smith added that although his company will be selective about which assets it supports on lockbox, 
The swap brokerage will allow the whole blockchain platform to expand crypto offerings faster than ever before because it will not be solely reliant on external liquidity sources. We built a machine trading platform, he said. It connects to different liquidity sources across the ecosystem, everything from different exchanges to market makers. As a result, I think we will be more aggressive in adding assets in the next six months, Smith said. In the long run, I see our trading system being both a consumer and a provider to DEXs or decentralized exchanges where traders retain custody throughout the process. All this will be made easier by Ledger's full scope of support for a variety of cryptocurrencies, scheduled to reach support for 100 assets by next year. It's the first big deal between our two companies and there may be more in the future, Ledger president Pascal Gauthier, I probably mispronounced that, I'm very sorry, told Coindesk. When we design technology for us, we design also for our partners. So whatever features we make for the Nano S, we will also make available for our partners should they have the need. In the meantime, altcoin traders will be able to pair Ledger's multi-coin Nano S devices with blockchain wallets for a smoother trading experience. Um, the Nano S is generally considered the gold standard for hardware wallets at the moment. We will see if this will continue being the case after um, Lockbox is out. But keep in mind here, Lockbox is at least in the beginning supposed to be much more limited in which tokens you can store on it, with the um, Nano S devices being able to hold a lot more. While Ledger handles the manufacturing side of Lockbox, Blockchain is focused on creating a holistic mobile and platform experience. This collaboration is indicative of a broader shift among industry incumbents, seeking to reduce friction for traders, who must generally juggle multiple exchange and wallet accounts and conduct extensive research about platform security before connecting their devices. With our products, you can go from cold to hot storage in a heartbeat and the device will never reveal the key, so it means that it opens many avenues, especially for traders, he said. Concurring with Smith on the role of hardware wallets in DEX platforms, he added, We believe our security systems and the types of devices that we have will be at the heart of this industry. Speaking broadly to hardware wallet innovations over the past year, Johns Hopkins cryptography, pro um, cryptography professor, I'm sorry, 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 Matthew Green told Coindesk the crypto industry is relearning some of the lessons that smart cards and the secure devices community have learned over the years. On the other hand, Green said there are still design factors that could help improve the device's usability, such as more buttons for entering passcodes without relying on a computer for account management. In Green's mind, the perfect hardware wallet would let users generate transactions directly without connecting to your computer. Now, um, I think this is an exciting development. I think this could be this could be one of the major hardware wallets in the future. You have here blockchain and ledger, two, two big movers in the crypto world, putting their expertise together, putting their software and hardware together. Um, this will of course be limited to just a few coins, a few tokens at first, but very exciting things here, especially the ability to trade crypto directly from it. And like I said, Ledger is very well now known for its good products, so this is very exciting. Um, I think this could add significantly to the security of um, hardware wallets. Now, hardware wallets were already the most secure place to keep your crypto, but there were risks, especially for users who aren't that well, um, well informed. And this looks like it's a mainstream facing consumer product that will erase a lot of those risks. That also means creating a more limited ecosystem for it, of course. But this is, um, this is a similar situation to Apple phones versus um, Android phones. With Apple, you have, in general, more security and ease of use, but you are getting into a very limited ecosystem. You are very limited in your actions. While for Android, there are more risks, especially for people who aren't as technologically um, trained, as technologically um, just literate but there's also more possibilities. And this seems to be pretty much that trade-off where the Nano Ledger S that is pretty much the flagship right now will continue as a more open option that has more possibilities while this new one will very much be a safer option, a more toned down one that is easy to use but might have more limited applications. That is more something for crypto newcomers than, um, than the current products. And of course, um, if you don't already have your tokens on a physical wallet, please consider getting one. Like I said earlier, I do have a link for the Nano Ledger S in the description. So if you want to use that, help me out a bit. That is very much appreciated. But just get one in general, even if you don't use my link, even if you don't get the Nano Ledger S. Um, 
anything that you're not planning to move quickly when prices change, it's usually best to keep it on a hardware wallet. Continuing on. CNBC's crypto trader claims Coinbase is preparing for an IPO. Now this would of course be huge. Coinbase, um, I don't know if it would be the first crypto IPO, but it would be one of the biggest ones. CNBC's Ryan Neuner, who hosts Crypto Trader, has promised to release details on the anticipated Coinbase initial public offering. CNBC previously reported that Coinbase is likely to take the most obvious path and become a public company. According to screen caps published along with the tweet, you can see them here, Coinbase has approximately 25 million users, around 600,000 of whom trade monthly. Coinbase earned almost half a billion dollars last year, 80% of which was from consumers. The firm's recent announcement that it had been approved as an independent custodian, remember we talked about this yesterday, in New York will likely only improve its revenue. The IPO prospects of Coinbase are interesting. It will be one of the first major stock symbols to be directly tied to the value and performance of crypto assets in that the performance of the company very much relies on the health of the crypto economy. At the same time, it raises the question as to why investors wouldn't simply invest in the currencies themselves, as opposed to investing in one of a host of companies who facilitate acquisition, stewardship and trading of such currencies. Um, I'm not sure how reasonable a question that is, because um, people are also invested in banks and in financial institutions, um, instead of just investing directly into their products. In recent months, crypto companies have floated the idea of pursuing initial public offerings, including Bitmain. The new reality offers Wall Street investors a chance to play in cryptocurrencies without actually getting their hands dirty in them. It also opens up new capital for the industry, which for years has been limited primarily to existing crypto holders in terms of pools of potential capital. Ironically, the chaos and corruption of the traditional stock market and banking industry played a major role in the development of Bitcoin. Satoshi's first block famously included a headline from a recent newspaper of the time. Now a decade later, companies built on, born and bred of Bitcoin and other cryptos are, in some senses, returning to default, offering traditional stocks to traditional investors and financial outfits. We come full circle and the new reality perhaps provides a degree of uncertainty for those who thought they'd figure the market out already. Now we've been talking about this a lot lately where the markets are moving in a direction that some early and hardcore crypto supporters might be unhappy with. We are very much moving into institutional money, we are moving into traditional finance, we are moving into a kind of symbiosis with it rather than overtaking it. And there are definitely arguments to be made um, for and against this. Um, for me personally, I am looking at crypto primarily as an investor. So for me, I am primarily thinking what will this do to the potential of the crypto markets in the long term, to the prices of the tokens I'm involved with in the long term. But I definitely understand the concerns and I also understand the ideologies that a lot of people are following here and how this might be off-putting for them. In general, for crypto markets, I think this... Um, Companies like Coinbase going for an IPO, if they are actually going for one, um, that is a potentially um, very positive development, could bring a lot of new money and legitimacy to the crypto markets. But the question you have to ask yourself is how far in bed do you want to get with traditional finance? And having stocks in a crypto company is very much traditional finance. And let's end the video with, I know you guys are always waiting for XRP, so I'm trying to make sure to have some XRP news every day. Today I didn't have to search for long, because the XRP tip bot that a lot of you are using in social media to, um, to send small amounts of XRP to people who are posting, um, who are posting tweets or face, um, no, I don't think you can use them on Facebook, but who are tweeting or posting something on Reddit that you support. A lot of you are using it and now you can use it from your smartphones because Google and Apple stores both are to carry the app in the near future. The community celebrates as the XRP tipboard, a third party software built on the XRP ledger, created by developer called Vize Wind, I probably mispronounced that, very sorry, reached a major success at the onset of being approved by Google and Apple. Regarding the news, the creator stated that he will also be creating a one-page instruction website that will be coming out soon. In an exclusive with AMB Crypto, Wynn said, with the XRP Tipbot app, it's really easy to tip your friends, family, or even stores or restaurants in real life. Just enter the amount and scan a QR code. The QR codes on the XRP Tipbot personal donation pages work as well. 
Furthermore, to acknowledge the significance and celebration of the approval, the TipBot app has featured an increased tip limit of 20 XRP on each tip. The expected consumers that will be using the TipBot in real life are stores, pubs, restaurants, charities and friends, families. Um, it makes sense, of course, that you would have to increase the tip limit to 20 XRP. If you're tipping someone in a restaurant, you will probably not be tipping them half an XRP because that currently is about 20 cents. Um, you would probably be tipping them something like $5, $10 equivalent in XRP. So you need a higher limit than they previously had. 20 XRP might still be on the low end for that, but they have to keep in mind that um, that money laundering is a possibility. So if they allow too much monetary movement, they have to um, they have to keep much more track of everything that's happening. So this is um, they need they need to keep it relatively low. He also clarified that the initial days of the TipBot app will allow the activation for users only by scanning the QR from their desktop. The team is working on an update that will feature mobile activation of the app as well. Recently, the XRP TipBot received an integration plan from Coil, which is another third-party micropayment platform built on the XRP Ledger. The collaboration enabled TipBot users to make micropayments in XRP via Coil. Coil is a crypto startup that was created for its users to tip the website that they visit in cryptocurrency. An interesting feature provided by Coil is Stream, streaming transport for the real-time exchange of assets and messages. This means that the cryptocurrency payments are made in tiny bits but in a continuous flow. It is considered a huge change in the XRP ecosystem, as it is believed that there can be a service that may allow users to pay per stream. For instance, the users may pay only for the seconds of the video that they have streamed. Colorful Crypto, a Twitter, a Twitter user and an XRP follower on the social media platform stated, Thank you for contributing to the XRP community by creating the TipBot app and anything else you have done for us. Now, the t we have to we have to talk about it. It's the elephant in the room. The TipBot app is a bit controversial. The main reason for that is that um, with the XRP TipBot, you might be able to link certain people to individual XRP um, wallets. And um, that is always a bit of a safety concern. Um, for instance, if you're tipping your favorite Twitter user on X, um, through the XRP TipBot, and when they decide to take the XRP they have been tipped off the website into their wallet, they will obviously have to link it to their wallet. And there are some worries that that might um, that some people's details might be coming out like that. Um, of course, um, it is always a good idea to make a new wallet or at least a new address just for this kind of stuff. So people don't know exactly which account you're sending into and what other stuff you have on there. But that is a bit of a safety concern that some people have. I'm not sure in how far XRP TipBot and the people behind it have, um, have addressed that. So if they have already sufficiently addressed it, I'm sorry for bringing it up. I just um, I just felt if I didn't bring it up, people would be saying it in the comments. And I'm I'm always trying to be careful to um, to consider both sides of an issue, even if I don't agree with both sides, or even if I ultimately don't come down in the middle. I always want to give the best arguments from both sides and. Um, if there are any worries, any concerns with a token or project, I do want to at least mention them, even if I don't personally agree with them, even if I'm not personally worried about them. In this case, gotta talk about it. But the, the integration with Coil to me is reassuring because Coil has a lot of former XRP, a lot of former Ripple people on staff and is working very closely with Ripple itself. So anyone that Coil deems worthy of directly working with, um, of doing an integration plan with, um, that gives that some um, some validity in my opinion. Anyways, for today, we're gonna end it right here. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you want to get these daily videos, make absolutely sure to subscribe. I put these out every single day. I have only taken one day off in the last month or so. Um, also, if you enjoy my videos, please do consider supporting the channel. There are a million ways you can do that. You could become a Patreon supporter for $1 or $3 a month. That comes with some perks, so make sure to click the link for that in the description for all the info. I will add more potential tiers and perks in the future. I'll probably start doing some kind of exclusive content for Patreon at some point, so do check that out. You can also buy a Nano Ledger S by clicking the affiliate link. I get a small cut from that. Um, you can do donations. There are some donation addresses in the description or sign up to have a Binance account where I would also get a small portion of your trading fees. None of these things come at any cost for you unless you're doing a direct donation through Patreon or a crypto donation, of course. 
and any support is greatly appreciated. As of right now, my YouTube channel is not monetized. I'm not making any ad revenue. So donations and people clicking affiliate links and stuff like that is the only way I'm making any money from this. So anything is really appreciated. In the description also the links to all these articles as well as my social media links and an email address where you can ask questions for a potential future question and answer video. Whew, this was a lot. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow.